So there's, there's two elements to psychology and sales. There's the actual sales psychology, which is a one-on-one with the customer. And then there's also the psychology behind your marketing. And it's really important to get the psychology behind the marketing down because if you spend on your marketing budget and you're off on, on that, that real message that drives home the sale, it's a very costly decision versus if, if the sales guy or the, or the saleswoman screws up their sales pitch, um, that might just be one lost deal or, or client. So, so being able to get the messaging down from a, a 30,000 foot view is really what's important here. In my career, Oryx funds digital marketers, advertisers, publishers, people that are at the bleeding edge of advertising technology and and, in order to be successful in that business, they have to understand the psychology behind the advertising. So I've had to market to marketers my whole career. So I've, I've done just a deep dive on all, all the ways that we could uh, communicate properly, because if you try to get gimmicky with your marketing, people that are savvy in marketing can see right through it, right? They could tell good marketing for bad marketing. And there's, there's a really powerful effect to having good marketing. So the four things I'd like to discuss really are the psychology behind it. The, there's basically eight buckets that uh, your advertising should fall into. And if it doesn't fit into one of those eight buckets, there's nine more. These are called the life force eight. These are what sociologists, anthropologists, psychologists agree are universal to humans, no matter what culture they're a part of. They're, it's called the life force eight. If, it, if your advertising doesn't fit into the life force eight, then there are nine learned desires that vary culture to culture. For example, cleanliness is, a, is one of the learned desires in many Western cultures, although some Eastern cultures might not have it as much. Profit seeking is also something that's found in Western cultures. So playing into somebody's ability to increase their profits is a very powerful sales psychology tip in the West, but perhaps not in, in some Eastern cultures. So there's varying, there's varying differences, but those are what's called the nine learned desires. And then the, the humans are drawn to color as well. So I want to discuss the, the psychology behind the color of your brand and logo. And then your copy on your website, or if you're doing a landing page to try to sell people digitally, there's a certain psychologically proven layout. There's actually a couple of them of how you should lay out your messaging to the audience. So I guess, you know, to start with the, the life force eight, it, this, this is innate to every single human being and that's the survival and enjoyment of life or life extension, enjoyment of food and beverages, freedom of fear and pain, sexual companionship, comfortable living conditions, superiority or keeping up with the Joneses, care and protection of loved ones, that's a big one, and social approval. And you'll notice that when you're looking at advertising, many times ads don't even fall into one of these eight buckets. So if you're aware of these life force eight, it really changes your perception of other businesses advertising and your own advertising because now you're like, wait, what life force does that fit into? Or if you have a product, you can reverse engineer it and say, what are the what are the one or two life forces that we can we can sell our product on? So for example, um, you know what's really big right now is uh, probiotics. I just saw an ad for this. And that plays on life extension, right? That would be a great way to advertise. If you sell probiotics, a, a, a company here in Cleveland just acquired an e-commerce probiotics company. And I was on their website two, yesterday or two days ago. And that's why it's at the top of my brain. And the whole idea is that when your, your gut is healthy, it prevents diseases. When you prevent diseases, you could live a long and healthy life. So in that regard, you're playing on survival, enjoyment of life and comfortable living conditions. Um, so, so many different ones. What, what Orex uses actually doesn't fit. What my company uses doesn't quite fit into any of the life force eight, but it fits into a couple of the learned desires. Learned desires are the desire to be informed, curiosity, uh, cleanliness, efficiency, convenience, dependability and quality, expression of beauty and style economy and profit and bargains. People love bargains. And if you notice, there's, that's a big, big piece of advertising is giving people bargains. And there's a whole psychology behind how you price your stuff so that people feel like they're getting a bargain. But ours, ours fits into the efficiency and convenience. We tell customers, hey, 
you got to wait 60 to 90 days to get paid. <clears throat> it's really inconvenient to go out and collect. Sign up with us and access capital on demand. We handle all your collections on the back end. Now, you want to push the message so that they go, oh, that's convenient. So having your, uh, and, and I'm, I'm happy to summarize all this and do a mind map or outline just so you could share with the audience, but having advertising in one of those eight learn or one of those eight life force buckets or one of the nine learn desire buckets is extremely, extremely important. The, the moment I discovered that, I, I went through every piece of marketing material to see if it fit into one of those buckets. Humans are drawn to color. And when you have certain color scheme on your website, certain colors have opposing complementary colors. And that draws the eye. So if you have, you ever go to a website or see a website and you're just like, wow, this, this is pleasant. I like this. It's probably because they have a, a nice color scheme. One good example is to use the sessions color wheel. And what you want to do is you, you want to type in your, co your code. So this you could find by just, you know, dragging and dropping. You just drag this and you could find your different code, right? Mm -hmm. So the code we use for my business is, and this was just by chance. We didn't just say, oh, we're gonna use seven or zero zero seven two BC. We just like that blue. And then when I discovered this, I realized that there is a perfectly complementary color here. And that color is BC 4200. It's kind of like an orange. And then you can see a, if you want to have a monochromatic color scheme, you could have a darker blue and a lighter blue. Here's like a green if you want to build in your green. So what I would recommend, and we actually use a lighter version of this because we laid it out on the website and it just wasn't, it just wasn't, um, we didn't like how dark it was. But if you have a business and you're like, okay, I want to use, uh, I want to use green in my logo. And then you just start clicking around. You go, okay, I could use pink. So the way this would work functionally is you want to have mostly white space on your website and your main text, your main colors would be green and all your calls to action, like your click here, contact us, apply now. Everything is uh, the, the uh, complementary color. And then you could have your footer as potentially the darker green. You, and then you could just, you could browse around. So you could say, all right, I want to, I want to try this. I want to try this purple. And then you look, okay. So the opposite is yellow. So a couple football teams have this actually. The Minnesota Vikings are a perfect example. They're, they're, they're purple and yellow. Those are, those are complementary color schemes. You want to always have complementary colors on your website with the secondary color being a call to action. So if you are, you have a, a main color scheme of blue, you want your calls to action to be an orange or some sort, because what it does psychologically is it draws the, the eye, the, the, the rods and cones in the eye are attracted to opposing colors. So it, it leads to action on the website. And this is stuff that um, a lot of agencies won't tell you. These are like advertising secrets that, that a lot of big agencies use for really big clients, but this stuff matters. It's, it, it's at a deeply profound psychological level that this stuff matters and then when you're actually laying out the the format of your website there, there's i like a format called pastor kind of like a pastor at church preaches on sunday mornings p-a-s-t-o-r and that that means in the very first part of your copy this could be for written this could be for digital the p stands for the people and the problem state the people and the problem a stands for amplify the problem. S stands for the solution. T stands for testimonials. And if you don't have a testimonial because you're a new business, you could do a case study in lieu of that. O stands for the offer. What are you offering that user or, the, or that customer? And then R stands for response. Give them a way to respond to you. And so um, I don't think I could think of an example right off the top of my head, but if you go to websites with this in mind, the pastor in mind, you, you know, you'll see, you'll see it laid out that, uh, you know, in our business, it would, it would say something to the effect of, um, you know, many online businesses, people 
wait up to 90 days to get paid, people and problem. When you wait 90 days to get paid, it forces you to deplete your cash reserves or sell equity in your business. Now you're amplifying the problem. You're saying you gotta wait and now you gotta amplify the problem. The solution is to sell your invoices or sell your future digital payouts to Oryx. And here are the testimonials. We put a link to our trust pilot. Here's our offer. We're as low as X percent per day. Contact us to speak to a funding specialist. So it's just laid out perfectly. And, and, and again, you'll notice if you go to websites that a lot of this copy is written in Pastor. So you, you want to define who you're, who, who it is you're trying to help and what their problem is. Kind of, kind of, you know, stick it in and twist it a little bit to kind of amplify that problem for them, then hit them with the solution and the testimonial. The other one is called ADA. It's attention, interest, desire, action. So grab their attention, grab their interest, desire, action. And this works really good in Facebook posts. Facebook posts are perfect for attention, interest, desire, action. So attention would be like, hey, online business owner, wouldn't it be great to get paid sooner? When you could get paid sooner, you have more cash to grow your business. So now you just, hey, online business owner. Now, now you grab their attention because people that aren't online business owners aren't going to look at it. Wouldn't it be nice to get paid sooner? People are like, well, what do you mean I could get paid sooner? Well, sell your invoices to Orex so you could get the capital up front so you can grow. That's a desire. And then the action, contact us today or apply today, open an account today, whatever the case may be. Speaking of Facebook, um, well, just to quickly recap, the, the pastor layout is great for landing pages, for, for written mailers, whatever the case may be. The ADA, attention, interest, desire, action is great for social media posts because it's short, sweet, and to the point. It sounds like a lot of this stuff are, 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 are solutions that the, the business owners, like the new entrepreneurs, uh, the ones who are just starting out, they can kind of take the ball and run with it right now and eventually work their way up to the point where once they got some revenue coming in and maybe partner up with a, a marketing agency or an advertising agency to take things even further. Yeah. And I would suggest they do that for the technical aspect of it, because if the, if the, if the business and the, and the owners and the founders, whomever is in charge internally can get this down from a psychological perspective, then you can go to, then you can go to an agency and say, Hey, set up my pixel tracking on, and my Google tag manager and analytics so that I could track all my conversions. That, that's a very technical job that they could do. And then actually doing the media buying, actually running the ads, optimizing the ads. That's a very technical job. Um, but, but there's no reason that a business owner shouldn't be able to come up with their own messaging. Um, that, that's, where, that's where it comes into play is on, on social media, you can do on Facebook what's called dynamic testing or A-B testing. And I'm sure a lot of the people in the audience are, that, that will see this are familiar with this, especially marketers and agencies. And I would, I would advise business owners to not, I would advise them to not have an assumption about what the best headline is on a Facebook ad. I would advise them to test multiple Facebook ads against each other because you might have different theories about what works. But then when you go to look at the results after two weeks and, and you know, 300 clicks, you see that one headline has a click-through rate of 6% versus another headline that has a click-through rate of 2%. Now you have this little piece of, of information that actually you could reverse engineer into your business and say, all right, I want to take this headline that resonated with an audience on Facebook and I want to redo my marketing materials with it. So it's very important that, you're, that business owners are constantly testing. You could test with dynamic ads. You could test your landing pages with building an AB copy, a, a program called Unbounce is a great way to do that. And, and I truthfully wish I discovered a lot of this stuff sooner. Um, but it, it, as you go, you learn, right? And um, you, you always want to be testing this stuff. Always want to be testing. So for the average uh, entrepreneur, someone who's just starting out, uh, has really no idea what step one is going to be, um, what is that step one? What would you what would you recommend they start focusing on today and putting in place tomorrow? Just to actually start their business. Uh, when it comes, you know, they got their business, but they're they're looking to uh, uh, you know start raising the awareness of their business. I, I would do keyword research on Google. 
because you, you, you want to, this is a great, this is a great book for established businesses. Uh, my, my uncle Jim Rafiti actually recommended it to me and, and it's just, a, it sits on my desk all day. And, um, you know, I pick it up when I have some, some questions and there's actually a whole section in here about words you can own. So what words can you own as a business and how do you do that? Well, you would, you would do keyword research. You could go to Google, type in whatever you think people, whatever you think your customers would search for and then go all the way down to the bottom and you can see other suggested searches. Then you want to use Google AdWords keyword tool to look at the search volume on a monthly basis or Google trends to look at the trend volume on a monthly annual basis, whatever the case may be. And you might find these, these, these nuggets of, okay, um, uh, uh, affordable prebiotic, just let's just use that as an example. Affordable prebiotics happens to be a very high volume search term. But then when you go look at all your, all the competitors selling probiotics, none of them are using that exact keyword affordable probiotics. So there's opportunities to just, I call, I call keyword research mining for gold, because if you could find keywords that are relevant to your customer, that none of your competitors own. And when I say own, I mean, they don't have any content built around it. They don't have the keyword on their website. They're not putting it on their marketing materials. So when you do that, that gives you an opportunity to go publish these articles and then optimize your website for Google. So uh, if you find an, a very interesting, um, uh, let's just say healthy fat burner, right? Because a lot of people want to take fat burners, but they're afraid of what's going to happen to their heart or they might have a heart issue, or, or there might be a heart-friendly fat burner that's based in apple cider vinegar or something, for example, that has no effect on your, on your, on your heart. So th let's just say that heart-friendly fat burners get 1,700 searches a month, and you go to all the, all the companies that sell fat burners and apple cider vinegar, and nobody is advertising an apple cider vinegar fat burner as a heart-friendly fat burner. But you can see that that exact keyword gets almost 2000 searches a month on Google. So that means you can go and publish content, evergreen content and blog content around that keyword and literally stake your flag in the digital real estate world for that keyword. So I would, I would suggest that is one of the first steps that a starting business owner does because the most important thing is that people find you. And then also whatever you write, whatever you put out has to fit the life force eight or the to learn nine desires. Because when you do that, it, it just, it puts you leaps and bounds ahead of where you would be. If you just think that you know what the market wants to hear, you have to, you have to really do a deep dive and then you have to test it. Okay, very good. Well, that, uh, I think that pretty much covers all the bases. Uh, was there anything else that we needed to discuss? No, I think that, I think that was it. I just, if, if, if anyone has any questions, you know, I, I'm happy to, happy to hold another webinar or something just to, cause I know, I know there's a lot of, um, I assume the audience knows a lot more than they may, uh, especially if, if someone is starting out just as a business owner, but the most important takeaway is that you, you got to look up the life force eight, use, use colors that complement each other. And once you get on, and then, and then your, your, your copy layout has to, uh, has to really fit the, the, the pastor or the ADA. Another good book I would recommend is Scientific Advertising. Cloud Hopkins, which was written in the 1920s or 30s. He's the one that made toothpaste famous, basically. Hmm. Yeah, they added the mint flavor and people like that feeling of cleanliness in their mouth. Um, and, and it's amazing because all his psychology that he talks about in this book is about mail order advertising. And it's almost 100% applicable to Facebook advertising because the, the human psychology doesn't change. So these principles that you can learn that I, I, I expressed on this call today are going to be relevant now in five years and 10 years and 50 years. They were 50 years, 100 years ago. So uh, really just get the psychological aspect down of your marketing. 
Educate to dominate your industry by joining our Business Strategies Video Network. Raise your profile, build trust with your clients, and drive sales leads with video content that works for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and 365 days a year. The Business Strategies Video Network. Contact our sales and marketing team to get started today.